Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast. And one mechanic you'll find in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms is phasing. But what brought this mechanic back to Magic? What is it doing here? And how often can you expect to see it? Well, let me tell you all about it today. It all started in 1996 with Mirage. Now, Mirage would lay the groundwork for a lot of things that would go on to be a big part of magic. Charms, a cycle of two mana mana rocks, and even the first ever version of Fetchlands debuted here. It was really the first set, too, where limited gameplay was taken into account, and the designers tried to make a workable draft and sealed environment. Even reminder text started in Mirage. But not everything introduced was as much of a winner, and one much maligned mechanic made its appearance here, phasing. The idea with phasing was that you could send creatures outside of time and reality, much like what was happening to Teferi at the time in the story. In Mirage, it appeared mostly on creatures, with a few spells like Reality Ripple that could phase out cards that didn't have phasing. The way phasing works is that at the beginning of your untap step, Simultaneously, everything with phasing phases out, and everything phased out phases in. While a creature is phased out, it's not in play, and it can't be affected in any way. So a card with phasing is essentially in play every other turn. Now I say it was much maligned for a few reasons. First of all, this is a tremendous downside to have on a creature. Let's say you play Teferi's Drake on turn three. Not too shabby, right? A 3-2 flyer for three mana. Well, the first thing that happens on turn four is it phases out and literally does nothing that turn. So your first chance to do anything with it is turn five. So you attack and then turn six, it's gone again. So for your three mana creature, you've gotten to attack one time across three turns. Being there half the time didn't really make up for the drawback. And it gets even more brutal with cards like Tanawa, which impact the rest of your permanence. Second, it was confusing. How did the simultaneous phase in and out work? Did summoning sickness apply when it came back? Could I dark banish a creature while it was phased out? There were a lot of questions. So phasing showed up in the three sets of Mirage block, Mirage, Visions, and Weatherlight before going away entirely. For years, phasing became the butt of magic jokes. Yeah, that'll happen when phasing comes back. It was seen as a failed, unloved mechanic. Even 2004's Unhinged made fun of it, with it appearing on the card Old Fogey. But there were things Phasing could do which were helpful. In 2005, Phasing got called up from the minor leagues. Cards like Oubliette and Thanos' Coffin had a strange wording, where they made creatures be considered out of play, which was suspiciously close to Phasing. So these older pre-Phasing cards were eroded to phase out those creatures. And while nobody really cared since these cards didn't see play anyway, and this errata was also later reverted, this is a very important part of the story. We'll get to why in a bit. Hold that thought. And now is when I come into the story. That's right, I have a pretty important role to play in the tale of this then unloved Mirage block mechanic. I was working on Commander 2017 and designed a card which everybody absolutely loved. It was an instant that made your life total not change for a turn cycle and flickered out all of your permanence until your next turn, making you and your permanence untouchable. But there were two weird quirks. The first is that the card, though being used as a protection spell, secretly had this incredibly powerful mode, where it flickered all of your permanence, re-triggering all of your enters the battlefield effects. And because it even hit lands, landfall cards were absurd as they came back and saw all of your lands hit simultaneously. Rampaging Bailoths, anyone? Second, to ensure that your creatures weren't summoning sick when they returned, it had to return them at the end of the player to your rights turn. It was just weird timing, but that's just how it had to work, right? Well, until one day, the rules manager Eli had an idea. Isn't what this card wants to do just phasing? Reaching back into the past to what happened with Oubliette and Thanos' coffin being solutions to a similar problem, the rules manager pitched us on making the first new black bordered phasing card in 20 years. For a mechanic plagued with rules issues, 
I never expected the rules manager to be the one to tell us it could come back. But here we were, and it was even a perfect fit because the card had Teferi flavor to boot, and thus Teferi's protection was born. The card went on to be a tremendous hit and entirely revitalized the mechanic. If you're a newer player to the game, you might not have realized those prior negative connotations. Teferi's protection essentially undid what was left of the distaste for the mechanic 20 years prior. The reminder text saying they're treated as though they don't exist really shortcutted past a lot of confusion around how the mechanic worked. And it was so popular, in fact, that it got the design team thinking. Permanents with phasing were a failure. They were weak, confusing, and not that fun. But could it have been that all those years ago, the Mirage design team was actually onto something with the spells? It was a great way to temporarily deal with creatures. And unlike creatures with phasing, which prompted a ton of rules questions, one-shot phasing on a spell or activated ability was a lot more clear how it worked, especially with the treat as though it doesn't exist reminder text. It also had the potential to solve another problem for us. Flickering has always been a popular mechanic in white and blue. However, it has a couple problems. On one side, it resets your counters, auras, and equipment plus kills off tokens, things that especially white does a lot of. And on the other, sometimes we have to be careful with flickering because like the fairy's protection also sought to solve, it re-triggers all enters the battlefield effects. Plus, when using a card defensively, you sometimes don't want to flicker your opponent's creature because it might have an enters the battlefield effect itself. So, seeing the success of Teferi's protection, an internal pitch was made that would have sounded ridiculous just a couple years prior. What if we brought phasing back as an extra tool in our toolbox to temporarily remove creatures? So we tried something. We stuck it in Core Set 2021 onto Fairy, putting phasing back in standard for the first time in 23 years. And it went off perfectly. It not only just made sense, but was a card players liked. So we saw that as a green light. And in Modern Horizons 2, we created out of time. And now, in Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, we see new cards with phasing in both the main set and commander decks. Oh, and Oubliette? Yeah, we reverted that one back to phasing too. Now, phasing isn't replacing flickering, and there's reasons why we might do either. For example, Guardian of Faith is a card we wouldn't want to do with flickering. It would be too strong at resetting your Enter the Battlefield effects, and also, with two of them, you could keep looping your entire board over and over again. Plus, with White's love of tokens, it wouldn't fit into token-based strategies. But with phasing, it sidesteps all of those to make a card which is plenty strong, but strong in the right ways at doing what it's meant to do. While they won't be in every set, you can expect to continue to slowly see phasing cards in the future, and primarily as a tool in White's color buy. It's been a very long road here, but in the most unlikely sequence of events, phasing is finally back. So what do you think about phasing? Do you want to see more cards with it? Do you never want to see it again? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk with you again soon. And in the meantime, may you have a lot of fun phasing out your entire board. You got this. You may just become a vessel for Vecna himself. And that's where this card design came from. It made a lot of sense to do something like Cauldre here, where you had to collect all three pieces to summon Vecna. A lot of designs were tried, but ultimately this was the winner. Lose life from a Vecna artifact and you'll be sure to